another segment of Pump the Cork with Atlantis. We are in a new location this go around. We're up, up in our sky terrace talking to the ever lovely, wonderful Christian O'Quintons, our property sommelier. So if you've never been in the sushi bar, this is what over goes over the street, goes over South Virginia Street. Sushi bar up here, oyster bar, oyster bar up here. But today we're talking about some new cocktails that we're featuring, the Mandarin Confusion and the Seven Virtues. So, what, what exactly are those? Why, why are we doing that? By because the way, welcome amazing. back from vacations, young lady. Thank you. Okay. I missed you all so well, much. Well, good to go. Are you drinking us? Yeah, all right. Let's do this. Why you know some boosters? Welcome back. Miss you just a little bit. I gotta tell you, I'm a very busy man, but I miss you all the while. Anyways, we're gonna talk two cocktails. One is vodka base, and the other one is whiskey base. And at the end, we're gonna do a little bit of a mention about sake, that great product, that great alcoholic product that actually makes people go wonder, what is it? Yes? Yes. So we're going to do that. But at the beginning, we're going to go ahead and talk about two cocktails. The Mandarin Confusion. Maybe very much we named that because the name of one of the vodkas, the Hansen Mandarin Vodka. This vodka is made in artisanal way. That means a very small production, high quality, great value. True mandarins go into the steeping process. How many? True. Just true. Oh, true Mandarin. True wow. Mandarin. So there's no um, any chemical addition to it. It's just fruit. It's delicious, uh, very vibrant, um, it's quite delicious though. And of course, we're going to pair that to our elderflower. Use a good vodka, kettle one, why not? You can always use absolute, yes. And a good Amaro, Chinar. The word is Chinar, by the way, it's not Sinar, it's Chinar, pronounce it well. You go to Chinar. the bar, Chinar. And a great bitter, so, yes. So I'm going to explain all that as, as I go. The number one thing to do, uh, this is the way the cocktail looks at the end. So when you come over here and you get the cocktail, it's going to look just like that. Yes? Uh, you will see your bartenders always icing your cocktail glass. Just What's the case. purpose of icing your cocktail glass? Just to bring the glass at temperature, so it's going to receive a cold beverage in it. And if the glass is warm, it makes no sense. It's going to warm up the alcohol in it. It's going to evaporate faster. It's just going to create a sort of, kind of a blast sensation into it when you so, want to vibrate. So next time you're having a cocktail party at your house, ice the glasses and you'll look super cool to your friends. Yeah, so by the way, you're going to get all of this at Total Wine. Total all wine. of those at Total Wine. Yes, I know. That's free uh, for you guys. I love you. Anyway, simple syrup. And don't worry about the quantities right now. I will send you um, a link so you can possibly uh, do it do it at home. If you can't do it at home, just come see us. And I'm using just squeezed lemon juice over here. Very important. Your elderflower, you got to be really careful with this. Super potent. You just want to add the right amount. And I specify the amount in your recipe, yes? So I'm creating a very complex sour. I'm making my regular sour with lemon and sugar, and at the same time, I'm creating complexity by adding liqueurs. And of course, an amaro. So through these videos, we always kind of talk about, we always talk about simple syrup. Most of the cocktails have simple syrup. Yeah. So it's probably a good idea to just make a batch and keep it keep it around for, for your cocktail. You know yeah. what, if you make a really good simple syrup, it will last maybe between three days to five days, no more than that. After okay. that, okay. This, disregard it. Good and it's know. gonna be this, this very thick, nine to one part. So whatever vessel that you use in, whatever vessel, nine parts to one, nine parts of sugar, one part of really hot water. And just dilute, dilute, dilute. You don't worry. Vodka. And as always, if you have questions as we're going through these recipes, these drinks, please write, write them on Facebook. We'll answer them um, live here at the Papa Sushi Bar. I answer all the questions, by the way. You do. It's very good. And we have a good time. Some people come to here and see me. We have a good time behind the bar, I know. Shouldn't do that. Those are grape bitters, is that what you said? This is an orange bitter. Orange scrappies. Bitter. You can find it at Ben's, by the way. Ben's. I'm giving you all the secrets. I know, I tell you. <laughs> Do yourself a favor when you're making your cocktail, taste it at full strength. This is when your cocktail is going to talk to you, whether I'm, I'm tasting right or I'm tasting badly. Right now, it is the moment to go ahead and make any adjustments. <laughs> I have it to look. <laughs> all right. So right inside here, though, you will find eyes just halfway there. You don't want to put eyes all, 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 all the way through, just halfway over there. And then you create your sort of kind of a nose over there, just to make sure that your cocktail stays. And then you shake. And this is part of the, the mixology workout. <laughs> I always joke about that. <laughs> Bartender workout. <laughs> Bartender workout. And if you're going to do it at home, just be elegant, right? All the way there. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> so what we're going to do, do a double strain. 
if you ask for a straight up martini or a straight martini light, you do want to you don't want to have ice in your cocktail, otherwise it will be over. So nice double strain, no ice in it. Nice little lip over there so the waiter can actually carry it. Looks like a great summertime cocktail. Okay. Transitioning to the seasons. We're gonna go ahead and exude the oils of an uh, orange peel. There you go. Put it on top of there. That'll rest on top of it. And we're going to use some just blueberries all the way from Chile. There you go. Do we get it from Chile all the time? Not really. Didn't even but this time, you're, yeah. You're, you're from Chile, yeah. I was born in Chile, yeah. Go Chile. <laughs> so, you might want to go ahead and taste it at the end. <laughs> there you go. We have a guest who's willing to taste the drink. <laughs> all right, I'm going to give this this out. Yes, absolutely. Rush. So you never know. If, if you're here on a Thursday, you never know where we might turn up and you might just have to get a free drink. All right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Second cocktail. If you have any questions, just start typing, start calling, we'll, we'll make it happen. So that was a martini glass. Yes, this is a martini glass. Classic, invented in America, influenced the rest of the world. Okay, this one over here is a double old fashion, a cocktail glass invented also in America. We invented for our famous old fashion. The rest of the world, follow through. You're welcome, work. <laughs> Anyways, I'm icing my, my, my glass over here because I want to keep my glass nice and chill. My mixing glass, and I'm going to start making my complex sour, yeah? The yes. first thing I'm going to do, Simple syrup. We're gonna see our bartenders over here using some, some bottles to, to, to keep the, the simple syrup. They want to know always how clear the simple syrup is. If you see that your simple syrup is cloudy, don't just you don't. You are laying down all kinds of knowledge. I know, right? Man, so don't worry about the recipe. I'm just showing you what to do. I'll give you the recipe online. Yes. Actually, Tracy will. I will. Lemon juice. And this, if you're coming up to the sushi bar, this is the seven virtues, yes? Seven virtues. So to be a samurai, you gotta have go through the seven virtues of school, I guess. And not that I even have one of those, but I love <laughs> the virtues. Uh, it, it is what it is, though. Um, I, I love samurai movies, and what can I tell you? Anyway, so created these cocktails thinking about utilizing a really great uh, Japanese whiskey. This is Hakashi White Oak. Akashi White Oak, uh, all the barley that goes into this to, to make this, this blended whiskey comes from Scotland. So it's imported all the way to Japan to try to make it. And it's called the White Oak because it goes into American White Oak char barrels. That's about it though. But I'm going to add my whiskey at the end. I'm going to make my complex sour over here. China Amer, really complex French Amaro, uh, nice and delicate, more aromatic. Than, than it is a marrow like yeah you can find okay. this where you can find all of this at Benz okay and then my famous Dom Benedictine yes very herbaceous hint of sweet hint of a uh, so sort of kind of a lilac in it and at the same time honey honey suckle it's uh, a cool bottle it's a cool what bottle. can I tell you I love it and of course I'm going to use a good bitters uh, this is a rhubarb bitters it's by Fee Brothers um, Duarte says, nice job, Christian. Thank you, thank you, my man. So, a couple of drops over there. Just remember the bitters, you can always add more, you can never remove. So if you're in doubt, taste your cocktail, yes? You just want to do that at full strength all the time. With more of the knowledge, I'm telling you. You can always add more, but you can never take away. Love it. You can't. I learned that from my wife, married for 20 years over here, I'm telling you. That lady is too good for me, anyways. Aww. See, I'm tasting it, and I would add just a dab more of a simple, just for me, for, for my taste, and what I'll be drinking it, so, my thing, <laughs> right? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and chill it now. I'm good to go. Again, dab it, doesn't go anywhere. Nice and shake over here, you're gonna do a bruising shake. A bruising shake is just, you know, very strong, burly shake. Burly shake, just try to get those muscles. <laughs> Michael from Yelp Reno says we love Lori, which is your wife, so thought you'd appreciate that. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> appreciate it. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and strain this into this glass. 
so this one doesn't need a double strain. No, because it's going to go into ice already. Go into ice already, okay. Right, so it's nice and cloudy over there. I want it that way. I want it cloudy. I want some sort of kind of texture in into the cocktail. There's a lot of honey, it's a lot of peach, uh, it's a lot of light light, there's a lot of jasmine flavors into it, and at the same time it adds this um, this bitter sensation into it. So it's a sort of kind of a play of texture, aroma, and flavor. I love this cocktail. If I could be having one right now, I would. So Exactly the, the same thing, you're going to use um, a lemon peel, you're going to suit the oils. Just right, right on top of that. You're and and I'm just surprised at how much comes out of the lemon peel when you squeeze it like that. When, when fruit, it, it is fresh, it has all that precedent on it. You want that, but that's going to become some sort of kind of an attraction, some sort of kind of pulling you into it. Okay. And at the end, some felty sherry. Oh, I love the just felty cherries. Just steeped into brandy and sugar, molasses. It's quite delicious. I'm gonna try that too. <laughs> good, good, I'm good. All right. <laughs> so this is the seven virtues. You the can find virtues. it up on the Some menu right. bar. And we will be posting the recipe for you later. So with all of these, we want you to learn. We want you to take it away. Share your stories with us. Share, share photos if you're making it at home. But we can't, we're in a sushi bar, right? We can't be in a sushi bar and not talk about sake. So I asked you to pull out a cup of sake, talk about it. Do you drink it hot? Do you drink it cold? What, what's, what's the deal with sake? So the, the idea of drinking sake hot, it comes from the time of the GIs of the Second World War, right? When we actually invaded Japan, we went to Japan and we told them what's what. At the same time, we got involved in drinking sake. The sake produced at that time was very low quality. The best sake was only for the upper echelon classes and whoever could afford it. The rest of us, we have to drink a very poorly made, not really well filtered sake, Nobody not really that. well made sake. The only way to get rid of all the harshness was heating it up. We learned that over there, we know our way back to America, we load up with sake on, on, the, on the ships and we drink sake heated up all the way back to America. That generation, thank you very much, we love you to death. But, brand new sake has come out at the end of the 20th century, the beginning of the 21st century. And I gotta tell you though, it is extremely <laughs> tremendous amount of dominia, tremendous so amount of, of so quality. <laughs> so a few things that you have you have to pay attention though. June Mai Daihinjo. June Mai Daihinjo. If you don't know what I'm saying, it's okay. <laughs> Your servers will know. But you see that you're gonna drink uh, it's either you're, you're, you're gonna drink a Junmai or you're gonna drink a Daihinjo or both together. Junmai Daihinjo. Highest quality of sake, Junmai Daihinjo, and it relates only to the level of filtration and to the level of polish of the rice. Is it getting too technical? Heck yeah! But what we can do though is just to go ahead and ask for a singular name. Do you have Taiko Junmai Daihinjo? Taiko Black. Taiku Black. Okay, we'll get so to that. we will spell all that for you yeah, in the we'll comments go. of this video after we're done. Um, and we have a we have a comment from Tom Hood. He said he could belly up to the bar anytime. If you're a master, <laughs> you're an artist of spirits. So Thanks, Tom. Thank you for the comment. Thank you very much. So this one would be clear. A lot of aromatics of almonds and rusty almonds, um, some sort of kind of a heel of backdrop of heather and, and grassy notes in it. In it. It's fantastic to go with any kind of sake, with any kind of sushi though. Um, you don't mind, I'm gonna taste it because I, I can pay for it, so. <laughs> That's delicious though. And the texture is, is just very light and it just kind of it rolls into your palate, creating a, creating a cleansing moment. Ready to go for the next bite, though. So, and any of the servers here at the sushi bar, they can they can walk you through the sake bar. And if you if you have questions, they're happy to help you pick yes. out something that's gonna be ideal to match with your with your sushi. So All right. Don't be intimidated. This one, though, it is um, another type of sake. It's called the nigiri. The, the nigori sake. It means unfiltered. This one is being accentuated with lemongrass and coconut. Oh, oh, oh. If it is your first time drinking sake. And especially if you're a young lady or a lady, you're gonna love this. Yeah, especially because good. I used to make a cocktail out of this and people were not. So that it sounds is, like a good summertime. It is, yes, cool it is nice sort of and thing. cloudy. Tremendous amount of texture. Uh, this little bottle will take you through, through the whole meal because it's very heavy though. At the same time though, the aroma of coconut and lemongrass, two opening contrasting aromas and textures, they come together in an unfiltered sake as a way of saying, hey, how you doing? <laughs> it is absolutely fantastic though to just enjoy alone, or if you will, just to add a little bit of spritz, 
just a little bit of spritz. Oh, okay. And then we just liven them up a little more. And you could close your eyes and picture yourself on a beach because the coconut and the lemongrass. You know, if you go to Thailand, there they're drinking this. Love it. They're not drinking pina coladas, they're drinking this. Thailand, they're drinking this. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you, you can always ask your bartender to add a little bit of lemon juice, just a little bit of lemon juice, a dash of simple syrup. You're good to go. It's fantastic. Um, Great. That's it. Anybody has a question, just go ahead and type it. Um, I know your day is busy. I've been talking for a while. I have a thick accent. Thank you for putting up with me. I appreciate that. We will see you two weeks from today for our next segment of Pop the Cork. In the meantime, we do have a Whiskeys of the World dinner coming up on Thursday, April 27th. Oh, yeah. That menu looks fantastic. So if you want to start to explore some of the ideas of whiskey paired with food, this is the great way great place to start. You can find that full menu at atlantiscasino.com backslash dining. Until two weeks from today, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.